Welcome to the third chapter of this course. Now when we have maintained all the necessary material ledger related configuration and activated actual costing, it's time for us to start examining how things work in practice. During this chapter, we will see how the system is posting material ledger documents after materials are purchased, transferred, and consumed. You will finally see how the system is recording the price differences that we spent so much time talking about during the introduction chapter of this course. Everything we will be doing in the system will be part of the end-to-end -end costing scenario used throughout this course. You don't need to copy the same exact scenario that I'm using, but I recommend that you don't just do random material postings in the system, but try to make things as realistic as possible, as it will be much more fun to try and build a real scenario. As you remember, our example company is in the business of manufacturing pulp. But before we jump into purchasing raw materials and then turning the raw materials into pulp, we need to make sure that all necessary costing and manufacturing related master data has been maintained in the system. That's why I think it's a good idea to start this chapter with a quick recap of the most important master data elements related to costing. After this recap, we will start purchasing raw materials and examine what kind of procurement related postings happen in the system. After we have enough raw materials in stock, we can start manufacturing pulp, which allows us to examine postings related to the consumption of raw materials and receiving of finished materials. In this chapter, we will not yet discuss the period end process as this will be the topic for the next chapter. Without further introductions, let's log into the system again and start our preparations to produce thousands of tons of pulp.